Hello, and welcome to our bi-weekly dev stream. This is number 17, I think. Is that correct? Something like that. I think that, that was yeah. the number I saw earlier, yeah. 17. Um, how's everybody doing? My name is Matt. Uh, this is HB. Hello. This is Mark. Um, and uh, we've got some exciting, exciting news today. I think it's exciting. And I say it every week, but I always think it's very exciting, even when, like... like We're it's, biased. It's, it's, it's like... It's We're like, a little biased. It's like lowballed a little bit, and I'm like, I'm, it's really exciting. Um... But uh, but uh, how you guys feeling? How you guys Good. feeling this week after last week's update? Uh, well, it was a little. It was supposed to be a calmer update, but I think that um, the Unreal Engine upgrade was actually way bigger. Than a <laughs> behind the scenes thing that was huge. Yeah, we spent yeah. a lot of time. Um, we jumped actually two versions. So Foxhole um, uses the. Unreal Engine and, and we were previously at 4.14 um, with the Unreal Engine and in the past we've always jumped only oh, by one, one version, right? Yeah. But this time we jumped two full versions so there was um, a lot of stuff broke, we had to fix a lot of things but uh, we do as much as possible we'll want to keep up with the latest version of the engines because we get a lot of benefits from it. Um, the engine is constantly um, improving in performance and new features so we want to do that uh, before we launch the game mm -hmm. into early access now, I, have a, I have a question for you about yeah. last week's update what is the uh, the situation with the shotgun because I know a lot of people oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> let's talk about the shotgun for a second um, <laughs> that was a balance thing that was kind of put it at the end and um, we overshot it a bit uh, <laughs> That was kind of my fault, um, to be honest. But um, but I think, <laughs> I think it, it's it's perfect. I think that um, some good things have come from it. Um, sometimes we feel like you need to almost like overshoot before you before you find like the, the right ground yeah. value. It's yeah. almost like a binary search of like, okay, what's the min and the max? Before it was pretty c clearly at the min. It was barely ever used. I've never seen shotguns, which sucked because we. We did put a lot of work into it, yeah, right? Yeah, I like the shotguns um, a so, lot. So, you know, even though we overshot it, now we have sort of the max, and then now we can find sort of like a midway point and yeah. kind of like work from there. But um, I'm glad to see that they're used more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know, sometimes when you're balancing a game, it's like you need to do certain things to find the right, like, uh, yeah. I guess balance is the But the there's word. no excuse for this one. We did overshot. <laughs> yeah, it's a little overshot. But it's in a really great way. Um, so uh, the other thing, I'd, uh, one of the other big things that came out last week was the uh, Fisherman's Row map. Oh, yeah. That was um, a nice one. Which uh, seems to have been received really well. I'm really happy about that. I really like that map. Um, there's a lot. I think there's a lot of interesting things in that map. Um, and uh, I'm interested to see how people use it in the future. Because it's got a lot of potential for like training and, and all that types of stuff. So, um, so I hope that uh, that's gone over well. Um, was there anything else in that last update that was like kind of major? No, no. The four sixteen thing was really big. No, but right now like there are a bunch of bugs um, yeah. that we're looking at. There was a lot more like technical issues um, than we thought. Things went smoothly in the dev branch when we launched it out. It seemed like things were going well on the first day. And then over the weekend, like more and more problems started happening, and um, uh, there were more bugs, I think, in this release. And most of it is due to like the engine upgrade, um, and and uh, we're hoping to fix that soon. Potentially, potentially doing a hot fix patch this week, but um, we'll see how far we get with the fixes first. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is one more cool thing I want to mention. And that is that we're coming up to our one year anniversary. Oh, uh, uh, yes, that's yeah. right. <laughs> nice. One nice. year, one year from the the combat prototype, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, we're we're coming up to it, and and it's I don't know, it's kind of neat. I didn't think that uh, we would have not launched the game yet into early access. At this point, <laughs> right. It um, just shows how much more complicated. It, yeah, I think we were. Is. Yeah, I think we were like originally thinking really vaguely right like oh well you know maybe in spring right <laughs> maybe in spring we will launch but but things obviously always take longer uh in game development than than you think and um but it's pretty crazy to think from that first version to where we are right now that that very first first update and and i think some of you guys are still with us which is yeah. which is really really For cool sure. 
Um, I think that like the A2DK has been with us almost also almost the year. I, for now, it's like been August, the, lo- right? the longest yeah. plans, like main plan that existed. It was not the first one, but I think by now it's been the longest one. Yeah, yeah. and and I was talking to um, uh, drunk Russian beer and saying, mm-hmm. hey. We, we should have like a birthday party for you guys. <laughs> that would be um, kind of cool. What's kind of an interesting perspective is when we launched the combat prototype, it was like, I think we started working behind the scenes in late February of last year uh, as like a team. Like it was a pro- that project that we were going to pursue. Well, it was really... Uh, like so a, you, you guys, had, you guys had thought about it for a long time, but when it was like, okay, this is the project we're going to pursue, yeah. we announced it to the team that this is what we we're going to be well, doing. Well, it was funny because we... We, we had thought about it for a long time and mm-hmm. it was and we actually started planning it like the summer before right mm-hmm. so, so so it was almost more than half a year in like the planning phase before we even made any art for it right mm-hmm. but but um, something that we may not have talked about previously which is thinking back kind of cool is that there were two projects we were thinking of doing that's true yeah. right and and foxhole was was kind of one of the the two and we were like prototyping these two both at the um, same time both at the same time <coughs> actually had like half the team doing prototype for this other project and then the other half the team um on foxhole yeah it was interesting especially right. because i was in the other team i was in the other prototype <laughs> yeah and, and so for me it was uh, a lot of surprise when i when when it came to actually yeah it became and, foxhole. i think some of you guys were kind of sad too I was a little right, bit because right, I, I was very attached. I, I kind of liked the concept of the other one. Yeah. I remember, I just remember at that time, uh, so this was like late February, early March of last yeah. year. Uh, Adam and I were beating our heads against the wall trying to figure out the look of the game and stuff. And like completely <laughs> so, isolated from almost everybody else. And yeah. It's just like, this is what it's kind of going to look like. And I and it was, a, it was a weird thing. And then suddenly we sort of, we got it all together with the art and the gameplay. And when it, we first kind of saw that first, yeah little demo of it we were like oh this is kind of cool um and so it was only a couple months after that that we sent it out to you guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was really we worked on it uh we've had it live for multiple times the life that we actually planned or actually worked on it yeah. at this yeah. point which is kind of funny um anyway uh let's move on to uh to community highlights um it's going to be a real light this week hb has got some uh, a funny story for you so he's going to let's Thank you very much for having <laughs> me. Yeah. Especially because I didn't, uh, guys know I didn't do the community highlights this this, this week. Uh, Adam, thank God, uh, pitched in for me as yeah. a pinch hitter uh, because I am very, very busy with some other things for the game. So I apologize for that. But he did a pretty good job. And we're going to look at a couple of things that I think were pretty interesting. Um, okay, so the first thing is uh, that I wanted to show is uh, is I like when sometimes I learn things in our game, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and this drawing and th- this schematic was found by uh, Theron Rabbit, and there was a huge discussion some time ago, I think like two or three weeks ago, even some maybe even longer, about the way people used. Uh, the rifle and, and the pins and everything <laughs> and they're compl- complaining because oh the person uses the wrong hand and things yeah. like that yeah. well first of all it's not a real weapon That's like, <laughs> I just gotta point that out it's not a real weapon and maybe that weapon has uh, on the other side depending on the other side there's a reason why I make him uh, use his left hand it's because uh, the way things are set up is much more complicated to pass the hold the hand with the, the other hand and then use the right one it's doable it just takes a lot more time in the animation uh, but it was fun to see this uh, and to see being explained on how it should be I thought it was like always oh, nice and besides that there's also like a couple things that could be added to the weapon like the grenade launcher which we do have now and also a bayonet uh, which is hey, something that we be- I so, think this was done with after oh. after the the grenade launcher though. But so you were saying? Yeah, I think it's something that like the bayonet, for instance, is something that we actually talked about before. Yeah, yeah, and and it's funny because a lot of the logic that we used um, for the grenade launcher can, can be used can be for used the for the bayonet. Yeah, yeah. So maybe. 
<laughs> it's it, it, like the bayonet. Speaking about a one year anniversary, yeah. uh, having uh, a bayonet is something that has been asked for about one year now. <laughs> <laughs> Ever you know since what? the combat it, prototype. <laughs> you know, it's funny because like the melee that we have in the game is totally stand in and something that we always wanted to replace. <laughs> and it's like, but I have to say that it went from like um, this, like this is the worst part of the game that we have to make better at some point yeah. to, it's part of the charm of Foxhole. I don't know if we could take it away, right? Like, you know, I don't know if Foxhole would be the same thing without that like super Over the top, punch. over yeah, the like, top it's punch. It's like over and, uh, hand right uh, yeah. that, that just knocks the guy out cold and <laughs> murders the guy but but so so it's tough now right like yeah. maybe we can maybe, but maybe we can like add <laughs> things to the game uh, and and now after we always said that we build up systems that can be like additive and they were trying to build one on top of each other this is a pretty good example uh, with the addition of the grenade launcher now there is the possibility of doing a bayonet yeah, if we use the same system. Yeah. So things yeah. like that are pretty yeah, that cool. Be really cool. I just want to say uh, it was so um, planned as being temporary that in our internal files it's like karate. It's called karate chop. Yeah, chug. Like, it was just a joke. <laughs> it, was it was really. A, it, it was a little bit of a yeah. It was really temporary. Yeah, so. I did. I did that animation in about half a day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those things. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and uh, and the other thing that I wanted to point out is uh, this pretty cool video from uh, Crazy Flying Chicken and this video, I'm gonna keep it playing in the background with a low volume here it's a uh, crazy, crazy always has a uh, okay if I... yeah absolutely crazy always has uh, interesting videos about like combat and like stra strategies and things like that and he does a lot of the videos about uh, what happened on a certain war over, over the weekend or in this case, it's more about like a certain moment of the campaign has, has been known to do that. But what differs this video from another ones that he did before is that in this, this time he decided to explain uh, how the pug things thinks and how they organize their own army mm -hmm. and how, what are the roles and what each roles offer and why you need them and how you should handle them. And we actually, well, we, we, we tried to see, we tried to watch a lot of the videos, but this one in particular uh, made the rounds in our office like for a long time, we, we all watched it because it was so interesting for us. And I think it's a very good example of how tactical Foxhole can be. Mm -hmm. and, it, and for other teams, teams that are starting, they want to build their own army, it's a good, it's a pretty good start as well to learn how to organize things. I, th I thought it was a, a pretty nice video, really well done, really well explained. Yeah. The question is, who can be a field commander? Who can be? That's the question. <laughs> it's not a. Yeah. Who, who at Clapfoot can be a field commander? Oh boy. I don't know. It's a it's, it's a pretty tall order. Right? We it's all hate each other and. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Will yeah. not listen. Yeah. Um, we, we, we see this, this, for instance, what is sh he's showing right now is he's showing the logic of how to um, how to equip your soldiers and why you choose what you choose and how mathematically it makes sense to mm -hmm. choose certain things and why why then you don't over encumber them and why you don't like why you always grab new uh, you, you try to grab everything that you can find on the field and things like that it's a really a really nice video uh, I will, I will, I think it's not included in this uh, community highlights, uh, but I'll, I'll make sure that I, yeah. I link it in as well. I think the one thing that was like really cool that we were really satisfied is um, the point made about the logistics as the main thing that allows you to win a war, yeah. right? And how important that aspect of the game is because we always want to make sure that the combat wasn't going to be like outshining the logistics side of the game right mm -hmm. um and we do know there are some there issues. are some some issues with that side of the game um there's some issues with like we're actually gonna probably gonna talk a little bit yeah, about we're, it we're gonna talk a little bit about it but but i guess it is like satisfying to know that the way that we have planned it is is working t at some level right mm -hmm. at least people understand that this the the, the you this, can't just this like backside is, is, yeah. is, is an important part of 
the war effort that we're trying to build on this game exactly. is not just yeah. running and gunning. Yeah. If if you want to run and gun, that means that somebody else is providing you with, with with the the, the support yeah. for that, and that yeah. is as important as yeah. the running the, the the shooting itself. For sure. I mean, there are actually other parts of the game that um, we feel are lacking. Like yeah. for example, we were just talking about this HP that uh, the reconnaissance aspect of the mm -hmm. game needs to be way more important, right? Like we have the watchtowers and like the binoculars. And so far that's it. And like how many guns do we have, right? Like how many weapons do we have? And I think that um, we need to focus on that aspect of the game more. And that was something um, that was in like the p main pillars of the game. Exactly. Point, exactly, well, so. right? So so it, it we have the, all these uh, systems in the game as we always talk about all these parts of the game that we consider to be the fundamentals of Foxhole and of course combat is a big one but logistics information uh, I think like teamwork information. Yeah, is, exactly. like, these, these are all aspects that we are look very close to and we do and we are aware that like some of them require a little bit more love from our side to actually we have to push them up a little bit more as well right like as an example um, I think we would love it if at some point in the future going behind enemy lines and taking out a watchtower or some other future structure would be just as important as taking out uh, as taking out a supply truck or yeah. or something of that sort right um, whereas right now like um, the information side of the game yeah it's kind of important you can catch um, guys sneaking behind your line and stuff but it's not as critical as it should be right mm -hmm. so and I thought that's yeah, this was a cool video. So I, yeah, this video is pretty nice. Thank you very much, Crazy. Thank you everybody that contributes, and thank you Adam a lot for picking up this my Slack this this week. But for missing this video, he should be punished. Uh, he should yeah, be punished should be harshly. Be <laughs> <laughs> One thing I just wanted to say about the video was um, I thought it was a really cool way to uh, show people uh, how the game, how complex the game can be. Yeah. Um, how interesting the game can be from like an um, organizational standpoint and like kind of what it takes to actually like lead a group of people in this game which is kind of like crazy and I thought that yeah, it did a really good job of like conveying information yeah. it shows that like it's not just a top down Call of Duty yeah, yeah it's, exactly, there's yeah. more than that um, anyway so okay, next, thank you. next we have um, uh, we're going to jump to uh, some community suggestions, which is something we keep trying to do every week, and sometimes we are able to do it, and sometimes we aren't. So this time think, we're moving it up. Yeah, I think this time this time we're moving it up, and we're actually going to, I think, you know, try to make a more concerted effort to include some community suggestions every week. So, um, this one, the first one? Uh, uh, I'm going to let Mark yeah. take this one away. Sure. Because yeah. uh, he's, he's curated all of these uh, suggestions. Well, um, by curate, I went to the suggestions. <laughs> Look at which ones were cool. <laughs> and the <laughs> community helpers have already curated, and I copied and pasted the link. So, so shout outs to the community yeah, helpers. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. A lot of hard work for me. It's <laughs> real real um, Can you zoom in on this a little bit? Sure. Um, so, uh, oh, this is this was really cool. So uh, I'm, just, I'm just really, really quickly going to read the suggestion out loud. Um, there are usually many trucks sitting idle because people have left the server to combat this at a garage next to the vehicle's workshop. Players who are done with their vehicles can stockpile it in the garage and can be requested by anyone. Um, in a nutshell, and you then can stockpile your there. vehicles. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's a really neat idea. This is, this is really cool. I just read it um, this morning and I'm like, that's something we totally didn't even consider. Well, at least for me, I totally never yeah. considered that. Mm -hmm. But that's a fantastic idea. Um, I think it's like a stockpile for your vehicles because people do that to like to like everything else in the game like all the items that are dropped um, you know you can you can recycle them well you can reuse them with the stockpile you can kind of put away to this one place that someone else can use in the future and vehicles are pretty much I mean there are problems there are other problems with vehicles like the locking and stuff just um, there are some issues there that need to be worked on but I think it would be really cool if um, you can kind of, if you're done with the truck and you don't imagine you're going to be back for like another day or so, that if you can kind of like recontribute it back. Because sometimes if you leave it unlocked, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going to leave this truck unlocked, right? And, um, you know, I want to let anyone use it, but, <coughs> excuse me, but you'll know who's going to get it, right? Maybe it'll be like the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll just be some, some guy, like, like, 
I mean, this doesn't necessarily solve that problem, but I think it, the idea of having it in one place that right. people can watch over and, you know, kind of like expect where to go, I think it's kind of neat, actually. I mean, I don't know how we would implement this. There's probably a lot of corner cases and a lot, yeah. of, <laughs> a lot of issues to yeah. worry about, but just that the high level concept sounds cool. Another, you, I, oh, sorry. Another thing that it, it's, uh, I think is really interesting about this idea that uh, is that uh, with the introduction of the stockpile, we were able to help alleviate an issue that had been plaguing uh, Foxhole for a while. Is that was the concept that like what I did is mine and that's my possession and therefore exactly. nobody else should touch it, right? Uh, but when we introduced the stockpile and creating crates and like large batches of ammo and guns, that that problem was not solved, but it, it did help a lot. You yeah. could fit, understand that you were helping a war effort, yeah. right? Um, if you have a stockpile of uh, vehicles in some way, it might also send a message that, well, this is also part of the war effort. This exactly. is not, like, sure, you spend a lot of time, but you did it for the war effort as yeah. well. That well, I mean, help. if you actually think about what, have, what would kind of happen in a real war, right? You wouldn't drive your truck and then when you're done with it, you're in the middle of nowhere. I'm gonna step out and leave, guys. <laughs> and you wanna get take the truck now? No, you're gonna go drive it back to your base. You're gonna store it somewhere or so something else. And it's gonna be assigned to a different soldier. <laughs> exactly. So I, I thought this was a I thought this was a really great idea. Um who's this from again? Can you scroll up a little bit? I don't think we is have that, it. Or is it even we don't no. oh, cor- uh Cornell Cornel. Well thank you, Colonel Cornel. Cornel Cornel. Cor- Cornel Cornel? Yeah. Cor- that's Colonel Cornel. Um so can you zoom in on this one again? Yes, right. it's okay. So um, this suggestion comes from PB five five four twelve twelve, who's in like multiple clans apparently. Um, <laughs> now that we have a fog of war with place defenses, I think we should also have a tagging feature. This makes another type of gameplay recon. Yeah. Uh, soldiers must have a radio and bino equipped. The radio will act as a communication tool, just like the watchtower. Um, the bio will be pointed to the defense and left click for just a few seconds for the fox will lose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is that the, uh, the radio and binoculars also allow you to do a tagging yeah. um, we, of, of, I'm assuming structures, but, um, potentially you could also have vehicles like tanks or something tagged which, for a period of time, depending on like, maybe if you have like eyes on it, it can be tagged for the rest of the team, assuming you have a radio uh, or something like that. Or with everybody that carries the same, uh, type of equipment or something yeah. like that. Which ties up to the uh, what we were talking about uh, information being uh, an important part of the game that yeah. it is still lacking, and this is one idea that shows how how much more can be done with it. We have other ideas of other structures and other items mm-hmm. that work in different ways than just the watchtower, uh, in which the whole like, the whole concept is to convey more information. Information is power. If you are a few general mm-hmm. and you are trying to uh, make sure that your troops are in the best possible position if you don't know what you have in front of you it yeah. doesn't work yeah. and o- there's only so much that a, a guy with a, a binoculars on the front on the front lines can do so yeah. there are other options that we are considering so, and this is a pretty sweet yeah i think at one time we had kind of somewhat of a similar idea um we had talked about this hb a lot um the idea of allowing you to equip a larger radio mm-hmm. to your backpack so your backpack becomes to have like a backpack radio and have that be able to um you act like a mobile watchtower with the added benefit of it marking down exactly where yeah. an enemy is sighted on the map so anyone else that's within range of radio tower uh, or a watchtower rather would be able to see on their map actually mm-hmm. um and, and maybe have some sort of I, I mean the dream version of this is have some sort of a history on that map so you almost end up with like a heat map of where Movement. all of the enemy movements are. I mean, it's a very complex feature, but I think Foxhole in the future needs more of that, right? I think we often forget. Um, I think it's really easy to, I mean, forget is one thing, but, but also like we're, we're dealing with so many different problems. And sometimes when we're so focused on like one particular problem, yeah. which is really important, right? Um, you tend to forget about all these other things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I really, really want to see. I think we all really, really oh, want to yeah, see absolutely. some of this stuff. I think that's what makes Fox so special, right? Is is that that stuff is important? Stuff like supply lines is important. 
stuff like reconnaissance important, right? And this is um, a thing that like personally I would want to do like more than like more for than, me as well. I'm a more, support more than, player. More than combat <laughs> or like I, I don't like um, sort of the more like logistical part of any game really like I, like I don't, I'm not a big Minecraft fan or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But this I'm I'm a huge like fan of stealth and like that type of gameplay so i think it could be really interesting to like layer on mechanics to really help recon yeah uh, in a lot of ways but anyway um i think it's a great idea um and i think we have time for no more we're gonna move on yeah. um and <laughs> i'm glad you said that <laughs> and uh so we're gonna move on to the uh dev stream portion cool. of the um of, of the the cast and um this cool. is going to be Mark. Mark's going to take it away. I think yeah. it's, uh, like I said, I think it's pretty exciting stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, first thing, um, we are going to be launching into early access um, at the end of the month. And uh, we have a date, we have a price, we have a feature set. <laughs> we got lots of stuff that we want to talk about. Um, so we'll just get straight into it. Um, so the date is going to be July 27th, right? It, this is, this is lockdown, um, lockdown and um, unless something earth shattering happens, this is not going to change. Uh, it's going to be on a Thursday. Um, and uh, it's going to be a nerve wracking day. It's going to be exciting for everyone. Um, Absolutely. It's a big day. And uh, I'm going to be on vacation. So. <laughs> Matt's gone. <laughs> That's he, not good. <laughs> he booked a vacation a long time ago. and, and uh, Can I book my vacation as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not allowed. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a really exciting day. And um, and it's kind of cool that it all, that that it randomly had landed about a year after yeah. we launched. You know that wasn't planned or anything, but um, yeah, because in terms of the date, actually, it you know it is kind of funny because um, uh, because we talked about a whole lot of different things for this date, and one thing that we always said was. Um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, last year and everything, people would be like, oh, like, when can we pay for the game and all this stuff? And we'd always said, hey, look, like, we're going to sell the game or we're going to launch it um, once we feel that every core aspect of the game is in there in some minimal form. Yes. Like, in some way. And what that means is that all, all the things we want in the game are in there in some sort of way where we feel like if we built on it, right? will eventually reach the full vision the final uh, goal or, of the game yeah right? the final goal of the game and um throughout last year throughout this year's a lot of problems that we solved to try to get to that point like at one point the weapon production was completely broken and we feel like we've solved that to an extent with the factory system um again we need to build on that in the future but the root of that is there yeah um and uh to actually get hundreds of players involved in the same war. We had the world conquest mode tests and that stuff still needs a lot of work, but we know it works, right? To an extent, and we know it's there. We know it can be done. And to a lesser extent, the campaign mode, it's not exactly hundreds of players working together, but it is hundreds of players kind of like over time being involved in the same war. So we feel like with those- And with wars those taking two longer modes, as well. And wars taking longer, we feel like um, that's always an ongoing struggle. But we feel like we've gone in a much better place now over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, we've seen wars on average lasting like, you know, three days maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they're shorter. Uh, but but we feel like you know again, this is not the final destination. But there's no huge question of like, can it be done? It, first of all, that's exactly it, right? We know that we have the minimal part of each of these. Um, these core aspects of the game and if we built on it we can reach the goal right so um we feel like we're at that point right now and um you know to be perfectly honest as a game developer it's never ready it's never ready <laughs> absolutely and, um i've had a lot of conver <laughs> conversations <laughs> about this um with you guys and it always seems like well that's not good that's weird you keep going okay um our battery is running low on this <laughs> on this PC, but uh, it never feels like it's ready, um, but you got to pull the trigger at some point, um, and uh, this is the date that we feel, um, you know, we need, we should pull the trigger on, right? Yeah. So, uh, is that going to... At the right point. Can, you, uh, can yeah. you clear that screen? Sure, yeah. 
charter? No. No. Anyway. Keep going. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's see, bro. Maybe we can plug in that one into here for a while. It's risky, I guess. It's risky, but. Sorry, guys. This yeah. is technical difficulties. No, we cannot. No. Oh, it just doesn't reach. No, it, it's okay. uh. It's just everything well, went what back. happens if this one? What happens if this one goes down? Uh, we I don't know why this is not working. Anyway. Okay. Well, well. Hopefully, this laptop battery. Will... Just keep. Just keep. Yeah. Just keep going. Yeah. Okay. We'll sure. Um. Yeah. So let's get back to where we were with the slide. And in terms of the price, so this was this was like a big debate for us. Um. You know, the first thing that we had to figure out uh, uh, from the beginning was whether it's going to be a free game or a paid game, and there was a lot of conversations about that. Um, we felt that, you know, there were benefits to to both paths, but at the end of the day, um, we just really felt that going paid would be the best thing for the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, it would be the the best chance we would have at reaching our goals um, because we wouldn't have to have free to play elements as a distraction from the game. We won't have to think about that. We don't have to compromise the core of the game in some ways to have like right. microtransactions or anything. Or like even that. if it wasn't compromised, just kind of kind of like tacked on yeah. thing, right? Even if it's not compromised, there's a focus too. Yeah. Like you have to spend effort on doing um, free to play elements. So um, we felt that paid was the best way to go. And not to mention, you know, hopefully paid will have a higher quality users. Mm -hmm. and, and another huge, huge point to me here is that as fans of games ourselves, right? We're, we're always huge fans of um, the straightforward sales models with games like you pay a price and that's and it that's it you get the game right you get to play it you get to play like however you want to play it um and and we feel like that's that's you know also the most like honest business model too right so yeah we don't try we're not trying to like nickel and dime anybody for like anything like if we you receive the game you get the whole game you don't have exactly. to like try to stop part of it a uh, high the content behind a paywall or anything like that and it, you know like different kinds of models work for different kinds of games and in this case we thought this was the best one for the for the game that we are making yeah I we understand that a lot of people are gonna have harsh words in regards to that because because of the way our game plays and needs a lot of plays but we thought about yeah. that a lot before and, taking the decision and another thing i want to say is not to say that another model wouldn't have worked but we just feel like this one is the best chance for us achieving our goals. And also, you have to understand that uh, as another thing, it's a model that uh, makes us feel comfortable in continuing it. Uh, when we do, uh, if we were to do, uh, for instance, like we did other kinds of game, mobile games before, they had different sorts of uh, monetization. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, th they are things that we decided consciously to step away from, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, as differently as it, as it may, it makes us more confident in that we can provide the best game in the end. Yeah, yeah. So Matt, how are we doing with this? Is it solved? Uh, I don't know, can you check your computer? It doesn't to, seem like it because... To um, the, 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 see? Yeah, you can see. Is it charged now? It no. looks like it is. No, it's not. No? Uh, the, 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 nope. Okay. It's not. It's not charging at all? No. I don't know. Um, Maybe we can switch switch positions. Is there any way you can switch that off? What happens with this mm -hmm. is basically when I unplug it, the graphics card maxes out because the graphics card is using some power oh, and stuff, okay. which is killing the stream every time I try. I tried like a few things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so why don't we just, maybe we'll just have to quickly get through this part uh, for the visuals, from the visual aspects. Okay. We have... Um, and then, um, this thing might turn off at any moment, though. That's the well, issue. Well, that's uh, right. Well, I don't know why the plug isn't working. It's plugged into the wall right now. Right. So it seems like yeah. we just got a problem. We've tried this twice, I guess. Actually, it's unfortunate. That's, uh, 
Maybe we could try this jack over here. You can give it a shot. Okay. Sorry, anyway. guys. We got a. This is un unforeseen. Yeah. Unforeseen technical difficulties. As usual. You're gonna go that way? Okay. Give me Well, okay, well, we'll try our best. We'll do our best. Yeah, if it goes out, then it goes out. Um, we'll see what happens, so. Yeah, so. Um, the price. Yeah, the price, come on. <laughs> Back to the price, that's, that's what we're talking about. So, when we first started talking about price, we're thinking, you know, what would be fair for the game, and, you know, we were throwing around all kinds of numbers, like, $25, maybe $30. $30, yeah. Um, you know, those were the kind of numbers, but we were hearing a lot of feedback from you guys um, about, you know, what you guys thought about price, what would be fair, and we wanted to put it at a price where we feel like we can accommodate as much people as we can, right? So we are going to And be, sustain the game. <laughs> and, and sustain the game, pay for servers. So the game is going to be $20. Um, we feel like this is the lowest that we can set it while well, first of all, we feel like the game is worth at least that much, right? Yeah. Um, just by principle, and and we feel like this is the number where we would be able to pay for servers, to pay for future development, pay for maintenance of the game. Um, so it's going to be twenty dollars, and if you get the game around launch, there's going to be a launch discount, another ten percent. So you'll be able to get it for around seventeen ninety nine. Eighteen dollars. Um, Eighteen dollars. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. did I say seventeen ninety nine? Yeah, you did. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> a low, low price of seventeen ninety nine. Um, so that's gonna be the price. Um, hopefully, with this, we can accommodate as many people as we can, um, and that's gonna be launching July twenty seventh. So, yep. Yeah, and the other thing I want to, there is one thing I did want to talk about with respect to this, um, and this is actually a really important thing that oh, I wanted off. to. It's plugging off. Is it plugging now? It looks like it. It's changed the light color. Is it? Yeah. Okay, great. I think, it's, I think we're going to be okay. Okay, good. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, either okay. that or this is the light that says it's, it's going to die. <laughs> so, um, actually, I'm well, going to... What were we going to say about the, the, the actual price? I, I know what you're going to say. Actually, I'm going to continue about the content first and then I'll get back to that. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the content that's going to be in the game. Um, they're or going to be part of the early access launch, right? Yep. Um, first of all, uh, tanks is going to be in the game. It's going to be there. It's going to be there at launch. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of other features as well, right? Um, so, but before I get into the other features, um, I want to talk about just a couple of things to expect when we launch. Um, what's going to change, what's not going to change. We're going to go into the alpha phase of development. Um, and not, not, not too much is going to change, but like I mentioned before, the main thing that we're going to do slightly differently is that we're we're hopefully not going to change fundamental parts of the game as frequently as we do in the pre-alpha, right? So we still might um, we still might be doing that, Thank you. Uh, kind of every so often, but definitely not as much as we're doing in, in pre-alpha. We literally be like week after week after week, we'd be changing like the meta of the game, yeah, and, and just was... totally flipping the tables constantly. So that's something that will happen maybe less It can frequent. happen now. It can happen, but, but it'll be way less frequent. And we're also gonna move to a new model uh, for the updates, where rather than doing um, feature updates every two weeks, we're gonna actually do, um, we're gonna change it up. So every two weeks, we're gonna do a maintenance update. Mm -hmm. That means fixing bugs, improving performance, um, minor polish, yep. just sort of like working Making on the those. game better. Working on those little quality of life things, just all the things that we always want to get to, but we can't because we're so bottlenecked on future development. Um, and then the other two weeks after that, we'll do the feature release, right? Yep. So once a month, there'll be a feature release. And then the two weeks in between, we'll be doing like a maintenance update. So that's another thing that is going to change, but we are going to continue updates. This is not going to stop. Um, it's going to feel just a lot like what we have right now, right? Mm -hmm. Except just slightly tweaking the formula. We're still going to do the dev streams. We're still going to do the dev blog. We're still going to do the community highlights. We're still going to do whatever the hell it is we do. Yeah, every things two are weeks. not going to change as much, <laughs> right? Um, another thing that we're trying to work towards is actually having a roadmap at some point. Because I know during pre-alpha, a lot of people, you guys have always asked, 
hey, um, what's coming? What's coming next? And we didn't really have a solid answer. Um, that's something that's on our radar. Like we do want to publish some sort of, at least at a high level, right? Like what are the things, major things we want to get done before we actually launch the 1.0 version of the game, which is a whole other conversation that needs to be had at some point. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of things that you can expect uh, at the early access launch. Um, so in terms of features, we're actually not going to reveal it all at once because that would be pretty boring, right? <laughs> um, but we're going to reveal features that are coming to early access. And what I mean by that, they're either going to be revealed on launch day or very shortly after launch, like the week after, the week or two after launch, right? So you can consider that period. This, yeah, exactly. So you can consider, consider this launch period features available at early access. Um, and we're going to reveal them slowly over the uh, next two weeks or so. Um, and these are sort of the dates at which we're going to be revealing these features. Yeah. Um, we're going to do one uh, on the dev stream today. Um, so we went to the blog, the community stream, which I know some of you guys watch, should be um, next Thursday. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're actually going to do a reveal there as well, or we're going to let the guys running that community stream do the review, handle that reveal, which will be kind of cool. So you guys should definitely tune into that stream. And then after that, our next deck that stream we also us to reveal. And then launch day, we're gonna save one thing for launch day as well, because I think that'll be kind of cool, right? And, and that's sort of the path to um, the early access launch. So there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up these next two weeks and uh, yeah. And just um, to be clear, uh, after that, after the early access, we will still have more things to do. Yeah. But these are the ones for the early access in particular. So if you yeah. have something that you've seen that we talked about that you are not are not gonna yeah, see absolutely. in the next and five reviews, yeah, it doesn't mean it's not coming. <laughs> and there's an important thing actually I missed that I want to mention because there was all this chaos just a short while ago with the power ground on this laptop and I forgot like 50% of what I want to say, um, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much because I'm constantly worried about this laptop going down. But um, one of the things that I did want to say is because we're really seeing um, into early access, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that like, um, you know, if you're worried about a part of the game that feels lackluster or broken, right? It doesn't mean we're not going to fix it. It doesn't mean like, this is the thing that you're going to get and this is what you're stuck with. Like we're, st we want, we want to make it super clear. We're still working on the game, right? Yeah. We're still fixing certain weak parts of the game. And like we we're mentioning, we're hearing things from you guys. Like, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the salvaging aspect of the game and how that might need work. So, you know, these are things that we're definitely going to work on and I wanted to remember to mention that. Yes. Um, yeah. So other than that, I'm going to go back to the thing that I did want to say um, about this launch, something that is really important that, um, that we wanted to mention to you guys. And it's about like, um, it's about things that we can do to like ensure that we have a successful launch right and 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 if there is one thing right it's very obvious right if there's one thing that um you should do is you should buy the game on launch day right and you should play the game on launch day play the game a lot the first couple of days that it comes out and i'm going to explain why right because i want you guys to know the full story about this and to understand um i think it's important that you guys understand um sort of like the ins and outs and this is no bullshit. We are actually like very, very open about this right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm just gonna be completely honest with you guys about it. Like, if you want to help the game succeed, if you want to see a good, a healthy future for Foxhole, you should definitely buy the game on the first day as soon as possible. And I want to tell you why. Right now on Steam, right? Steam has changed a lot over the last couple of years. Yes. Steam has changed a lot, and almost anyone can publish a game on Steam right now. It's very open. The barrier to entry is extremely low. Almost anyone with a Unity license and a hundred dollars can publish a game on Steam. And if you ever go to the new release section, you'll see a graveyard of games there, right? So there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of game developers all competing for space on Steam, and and Steam doesn't really give you much visibility. Just by launching a game on Steam these days means nothing. If it was four years ago. It's a big deal. You launch a game on Steam, you get a lot of free advertising from the Steam storefront, and you know you're you're kind of guaranteed some level of like success, success. right? But um, the way that Steam is now, you're guaranteed nothing, right? Like you might as well go outside and 
open up like a lemonade stand and expect to get sales. It's actually, I mean, that's like a hyperbole, but it's, it's not too far from that, right? So um, that means, so what that means is in order to get any kind of visibility on Steam, you need to have a lot of people purchasing the game right, right, at, away. right at the beginning. Because the way that their algorithm works, they, what they rely on is they look at the numbers that are, are coming in when you launch. And depending on how those numbers are going, they will start to give you visibility at certain parts of the store. So if you ever wonder why when you opened up Steam and you see, um, you, you see like a pop-up window yeah. and it'll say, hey, this game is on sale or in, at the top of the store, you'll see that slider with like these games. Those games aren't there because they launched a game. Those games are there because they're getting numbers because on the first one to two to three days, lots of people are purchasing the game. Lots of people are reviewing the game. Lots of people are playing the game. And um, those things all will contribute to um, your game showing up in all these places. And then, and then the more those numbers are, they start showing up in more places. And it's a snowball right? effect. And it's, and it's a snowball effect. But if you don't reach, if you don't get to that point where your game is snowballing, you start going downwards. And when you start going downwards, it's very difficult to come back from that. Like it's very, very difficult. And it's even more difficult for a multiplayer game to come back from that. So this is a very, very critical point. Um, we understand if you do not have the means to purchase the game, we fully understand that we hope that in the future, maybe when you do have the means to do it, you can do it. So, you know, not forcing anyone, <laughs> right? We're saying, you know, hopefully if you can, but if you do have the means, if you want to support the game, if you like Foxhole, you know, we feel like the, Matt. The best thing, the best thing, the best thing you can do for the game is like buy it as yeah. as possible. And, and, and there's just one last part that I want to ramble on just a little bit more. You guys are probably sick of hearing me talk about <laughs> this, but, but I just want to like make sure that I kind of say it all is, is that throughout the, throughout the development of this project, um, we have made very key choices on how we develop and who's involved, right? And I can tell you that we've had opportunities for funding, for publishing. We've definitely, people have come to us uh, um, with funding, right? And people have come to us, large publishers have come to us several occasions. One of these publishers is huge, right? Um, several occasions. They came to us interested in publishing Foxhole and in funding a part of the game, right? But we've turned them all down. Why? Because we feel like the only, the best way to make this game, the best way to reach our goals, the way to make Foxhole the best it could be, is that the only people that are involved in making the game it's is us. the developers and the community and the community and no one else. No one else. If anyone else mucks with the game, it's gonna be worse. It's it's, it's gonna be worse for sure. And that's why we stuck with this. But because we've stuck with this, that means we're also kind of on our own with the marketing of the game. And which is why, like, you know, I've been harping on this for the last like, <laughs> the last, like 10 minutes is that we've, we've, now is the time, right? Like now is the time, um, you know, when it launches July 27th, if, if you have the means, if you like the game, you want to support the game, please don't wait, right? Yeah, that would be the best way yeah. to help Foxhole right now. Uh, the choices that we made were made in order for us to be able to do a game that as you all know it's it's different from what it is out there like it's not like people compare to other games it's not it's not running with rifles yeah. it is not Call of Duty it is not uh, Starcraft it's not, it's not any of those games it is different but because it's so different if we had somebody, it would influence the way the game and the way Absolutely. the game is done. Yeah. Yeah. And we decided very consciously take the risk of uh, take the risk of not accepting any publishers, but being able to do the yeah. game that is the best for us and for you guys. And we've completely we've completely funded the game with our savings from our last titles. So yeah, we have no ex we have no external funding, right? It, this is all from the studio savings, so you know, <laughs> we, we really hope that you know things will go well. But but uh, but I think they will, and I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast that day, man. I'm I'm very happy about it. Cool. Right, shall we move on to the features? Finals. Yes. Wow. The yeah. Features. Oh, only took half an hour. Don't yeah. Worry. Yeah. And a broken computer. <laughs> and a broken computer. Yeah. So, so I want to talk about a, one, one feature really quickly that we hope to test before early access launch actually. Something we've like um, talked about in the past a lot and that's uh, 
player profiles. I'm not gonna, I think we're running out of time, Matt, so I'm actually gonna try to like zoom through this stuff. Um, but I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but basically this is one aspect of the game that we've been thinking about for a very long time. Um, and we always felt was missing is they want to be able to have a, players to have a sense of progression in the game and be able to personalize their characters a bit, right? And, um, and we also want players to be able to take something away from the campaigns that they're playing, right? Yes. Um, in these wars that they're playing, because right now, you, you know, they're really fun in itself. And that was our main goal is to make it so that the wars themselves are the reward, right? But we feel like it is kind of cool if you're able to be part of a campaign and Sort of earn like a medal from it, yeah, um, or something like that. From so what you did, and like have a record about the things that have you. a record, something you can like build towards. And um, we're gonna launch player profiles in a very limited manner at the beginning, but once it's there, um, it's gonna be easy to build on top of it because a lot of the main challenge with this is building out um, the, the infrastructure, the infrastructure, the server technology that's needed um, to handle player profiles, right? So it's the same story as that with everything we do small in the beginning with the that's with right. that content, yeah. the idea of preparing to be expanded yeah. that's something that i'm very excited about to be yeah. honest <laughs> so it, this is going to be one of the earliest access feature the first feature we're gonna uh, first reveal the first reveal other than the tanks right i guess tanks is kind of a separate story that we talk about so much so we're not going to talk much about it but field machine gun again i'm not going to say too much because we're out of time, time but he, here's the slide for it. Um, I'll try to post this up somewhere, but Field Machine Gun will be part of the Early Access launch. Yep. Um, and hopefully we have time for a little bit of Q&A. Uh, is, that, is, that, is that everything? Are we ready? Do you have, have any final thoughts before we... You guys start getting your questions ready. The yeah. Field Machine Gun is really cool. Right. I'm having fun doing it. <laughs> but, uh, That's what, how much we're going to go. <laughs> is, is awesome. No, I think there's, there is one thing to say about it is, is that we're going to make this so it's, so it's, uh, it's going to be... It's gonna be Pretty powerful, maybe a little OP at the beginning, but um, yeah, hopefully we've been working on this for a really long time, so yeah. hopefully it'll be cool. I mean, it looks cool, and uh, based on the description, it sounds like it's made to like take out defense defensive positions. Yeah. So that seems like a needed uh, check right now. Cool. Um, so let's move on to some questions. I think Donder God is gonna be really happy about the full machine gun. <laughs> So I was complaining about the AI. Um, <laughs> O3GLE asks, Harvester question mark. I told you. Uh, yeah. I told you. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so the whole um, issue of uh, scrapping, salvaging, scrapping, um, is, is something, like I mentioned, that is starting to move up in, in the priority of things. We're, we're hearing a lot of feedback about that. Um, and uh, harvesters, harvesters may be a part of that, part of the answer. But there's other things we're thinking about too. Um, we're 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 also heavily thinking about like um, how the how that whole mechanic works at the fundamental level. Yes. Um, and and hearing the problems, the issues that you guys are having with it. So um, I guess the best that I can say is that it's moving up in the in the list of priorities and it's something that hopefully shortly after the early access launch we'll be looking into that yeah if i if i can put it in a certain way Absolutely. is that uh the harvester is something that we're excited but we put the harvest it's harvester itself on more on the back burner because we want to deal with the base more basic fundamental problems that we see people talking about with the scrapping the harvester is not the ultimate solution if there are more basic problems that we have to tackle first. Yeah. So it, it is coming. We're still looking into it. Um, there's one question I just saw. <clears throat> Will we be able to change our in-game? This is actually this is two questions regarding the profiles um, from General Fanter and someone else that I will find their name. Will there be a profile wipe and will you be able to change your name in-game? Yeah, okay. So you will be able to change your name and game with the profile wipe where we're figuring out exactly what we're going to do with that so i don't want to say anything yet um but do expect some sort of a reset of some sort but but um uh, I, I don't want to detail that yet until it's finalized yeah. but yeah you, you will be able to uh, customize yeah. your profile including, including which will include name. the gaming yeah. the yeah. name in game yeah. so just to clarify um the, like the the ranks and everything, there's a chance that they will be. There's, there's a, a very, there's a very good chance. Yes, it's a very good chance. That's good to know. 
Um, Lurkus asks, will player be, play, 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 play. Will players be able to hitch rides on the sides of tanks like you see from footage and photos <laughs> of World War II? So that's actually, I've discussed this feature with several people, um, with Stefan, who's the main guy who's working on tanks, um, and we think it's an awesome idea. Uh, we don't think it's necessarily very difficult to implement, but there may be corner cases. Um, it's a good suggestion. I think that's a good suggestion that we should think about, right? Trying to emulate a lot of the things that we see from photos and footage of, yeah. of those wars is always that fun part. But mm, maybe they're not the highest priority right now. It's some yeah. things that we do discuss. We do talk about it. Every time we see something like that, we think, oh, it's, that's really neat. Can we do it? The answer usually is, yes, we can. And then the follow-up question is, should we even focus on this right now? Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's a... It's definitely though something we have talked about and, yeah. and it is a cool idea. X Google asks, how will instruments work? <laughs> um, I wanted, awesomely. I wanted to throw you this curveball. Yeah, so uh, I'm instruments looking forward. is something that some 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 of us on the team have been really excited about and we definitely feel like it fits in with the world of Foxhole and um, it fits in as something that should be in the game at some point. Um, hard to prioritize that as a really high thing. <laughs> but we have received a lot of feedback about it, which is like, I don't think there's been a single negative feedback on musical instruments. Everyone's really excited about it, unless it's a big joke that's on us, but everyone seems to be really excited about it. Well, if it is a big joke, they must understand that the people in the studio are also excited about the possibility. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have talked about if we ever had musical instruments, it can't be basic. People need to be able to make their music, like, to, like, compose music in there. Yeah. And, and, and you know, not make it, like, a fluff. You just hit a button and it plays a song. Yeah, we actually, we actually talk actually, about if we were to implement, what would be the cool features to bring in? Yeah. We actually so, talked about that. Um, I don't know. At some point, at some point, hopefully. So keep tuned. Yeah. yeah. Buy the game on Early Access <laughs> and then after that. Um... Rice asks, uh, why are you guys only on Steam? A few months ago, uh, Nuba said that maybe we could see some others. Besides Steam? Besides Steam? Besides like Steam, like consoles why, or... Why, why are we only on, on Steam? Like, as opposed to... As opposed to, Steam? I don't know... Origin? GOG Geo or Origin. Oh, okay. Or, um, you know. Stuff like... So, uh, we are going to look into um, the, the Humble Store and probably GOG as well. We're not opposed to that. Uh, the game is gonna run on Steam at least exclusively at the beginning at first because a lot of the technology is built on Steam, so it'll be difficult to uh, decouple that. But in terms of selling it, um, we've sold our past game on the Humble Store, so yes. we have no problem with that. Um, and we we uh, we have worked with the Humble Store, so um, there's no problem with that. We have nothing against that. I, actually, no. I, I, I use the Humble Store. And we actually time. worked with um, uh, Bundle Stars. Oh. There's another store. So yeah, we have no problem with, like, there is no exclusivity or anything like that to Steam Store. Um, so as we're probably going to look into these other storefronts as well. No, if the question, if the question was regarding, uh, like, a, for, for instance, a console, that's a completely, completely separate thing. The architecture is completely different. The gameplay would be different. <laughs> yeah, console is a different beast. If that was a part of the question, um, console requires um, a whole lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell you that um, because our other game was on console and yeah, yeah, and and there are a lot of like steps that you got to go through to launch on console, and um, a game like Foxhole and all its complexity and its multiplayer complexity might not translate is, is something that I mean I personally hope that in some future. We can see a console version, but that's like uh, more of a, a a pie in the sky thing at this yeah. point. That that hopefully one day might not be a pie in the sky thing, right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna take two fun questions since it's the one year anniversary. Sure. Sure. Um, one of them, uh, I can't remember who. Okay, so it was uh, one potato, I O work. Lower. Lower. One potato lower. I know. Uh, do you plan to introduce more serious, lore related stuff? I think that's a really interesting question. 
a biased question. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a, a I think it's a, question, man. I think it's a question that a lot of people want to know, like the answer to. And I think like um, lore will probably never be like handed out on a silver platter in like a story that you can follow, or in like grimoire cards, or something like that. Oh. Um, it will be in the game, and it'll be in the game in the way that you have seen it. There'll just be more and more and more and more and more of it, and hopefully. We do have some pretty cool ideas that we already talked about that we are there, working there's on. There's some stuff that, you know, HB and I are working on behind the scenes. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be in the game. You just have to keep your eyes open and it's not going to be... It's, you're never going to just be, here's the lore. You're, it's going to be kind of in the game. And um, that kind of leads me to the other question I've had. I've lost the name, so if you ask the question, uh, you can uh, mention it. They mention you, you ask the question and I'll call you out. Um, what inspired us to make this game? Oh, that question gets asked quite a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I like it because it gets asked quite a lot, which means I think a lot of people are interested in, like, like where do we come up with the... Uh, it specifically, it was like, it seems like a hybrid of, like, Battlefield and, like, an RTS and yeah, yeah. that type so, of thing, so... So I can, like, um, say that there wasn't this... This definitely wasn't a, <clears throat> let's take this game and cross it over with this game, right? More so, it was like, um, it started because... We like the idea of a game where there's lots of players playing in the same war, and they can, um, and, and they're they're all part of the same world, and um, players are able to control all aspects of this war, and when the war is finished, they can come out and have like a war story to tell, right? I think that's what it really comes down to is like this this highly player player driven game, this player driven um, game about war um, where, where players are kind of in charge of all aspects of it and I think there are other games that kind of like capture this in some ways um, we feel like EVE Online is, is, is kind of like referenced a lot um, as, as, as something that has these aspects um, a game like Planet Side you know certainly has its aspects movies like Saving and Private Ryan um, shows like Band of Brothers um, these are all kind of like I guess references that have had have, have parts of this but there was never a we want a battlefield that is top down that was not even in fact in the beginning that wasn't like we kind of almost thought about the, the game concept in like an abstract manner before we even started thinking about stuff like should it be top down or should it be like first person well, no, I believe one of the early like I believe one of the early versions of the game that you had talked about and that was we, we, it was rumbling before we even really were like it's going to be top down was it was going to be turn based exactly which I thought right. was really interesting at the time on a more on a more on even a more basic level I think that the whole idea came from our want and we, we always have a lot of discussions of game pitches and game ideas uh, it came from our want to like what if we ha what if we have a game that everybody has to work together absolutely like that's yeah. like the most that basic the form thing, yeah. like yeah yeah exactly where the focus was on people were working together in ways that we've never seen in the game yeah. before right um, and and I think that was definitely one of the driving goals so it, it's yeah. I mean, even some of the other, we used to have a thing where, uh, you know, weekly we would have to do like game pitches with, yeah, with, yeah, with, with our team and um, over and over and over again games where everybody works together to accomplish some big goal came up. So I think it was like a good, it, it was, was like a good too, fit. Yeah. Um, just one final sort of follow up, sure. like, because uh, a lot of people ask this question, I saw this. I saw this uh, on a bunch of stuff on the Reddit, I saw it on Discord, a whole bunch le lately. Um, what games inspire us? In general, yeah. Personally, so, or for Foxhole. I'm gonna say for, for this particular question, personally, for Foxhole. Like when you're working on stuff for Foxhole, what mm. inspires you? Uh, as, for, as as far as other games, and maybe not directly, just even abstractly, like what inspires uh, you? Personally, for me, right now, uh, I, I I'm people know I'm really into Overwatch, and I do, I know that other people in the studio have completely different uh, view on things, on don't like the game or like the game. But one of the aspects that I love about the game, two aspects that I love about the game is the vi visual polish of it, the visual language. For, for me, that's important, especially on, on, on the, my area. And also is that it's a teamwork based game. Uh, you can see that teams crumble very quickly if they don't work together. And that's, of course, a part of the aspect of Foxhole. Mm -hmm. What about you, Mark? 
Um, I think I, again, a game like uh, EVE Online, um, I love the concept. I played it, uh, um, I actually worked on the Mac version of it a long time ago and I got a free subscription for like a couple of years. And I tried playing it for a long while and it's just so hardcore. <laughs> I couldn't get into it. Like I, I was part of a small clan for a while and and um, and and even though I didn't I never experienced that game to the level that a lot of other players have, right? There was this big thrill when you went into any kind of like a battle because you knew the stakes were so high, right? Like um, uh, I, there were times when I remember um, very like distinctly in that game when I went into a battle um, it felt like every moment mattered and it felt like if I hit the wrong button I'd be screwed I would lose ships that I worked very hard for and and it was just this very like um, player driven high stakes game and it had so much depth and I loved that right and and you know unfortunately it was just like I didn't have the time for it because it was just it was just such a complex game right and, and not to mention that I kind of sucked at it too and everyone else was so much better than me but but it did have this quality where um, because the stakes were high and things felt more real in a in a strange way um, and and I thought that was cool um, I think another game that is that's uh, kind of neat is um, so I'm not exactly like a huge fan of all these like survival games that have yeah. come out right but but I do think that they have this quality where they try to reduce the amount of like magical things in them, right? So there's not, in a lot of those games, in games like Rust, it's not a whole lot about stats, right? But you still get this, like, you still want to go back and play them. Things feel real, like, um, and I think the aspect of those games that I like is like, when someone, someone can come and they can kill you and take all your stuff and that's it. There's no checkpoint, there's no save point, it's gone. And in the same way, like I think in Foxhole, you know, you can spend a long time on building a truck, on, on like making a bunch of supplies. You can drive it. You can be like ambushed in the middle of the road and lose it all. And I think that that is a really powerful thing because it makes it makes things feel real in the game, right? Like there is no safety net. There's I mean, lots of stake, at stake. Lots yeah. of stake. And that causes a whole lot of problems as well. So it's, so it's not all good. But, but I think those are the things that I think kind of kind of like inspire um, me from other games. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a lot of the stuff uh, that I work on, um, I'm really inspired by uh, like really high quality open world games like The Witcher. Um, <laughs> I think it, uh, I, Mark and I talked about this a lot when we, when we started working on like the world is that we wanted to create a world that was tangible. That wasn't just like procedurally generated or anything like that. There was something that was like really real, yeah. and so I think a lot of inspiration from games that obviously do that really well because like that like there's there's sometimes with some games there's just like intangible quality that makes it feel like a really unique space. And um, as far as as far as some of the other things that I work on, um, like Diablo, because uh, it's it's a really well made game that's got a perfect like it's perfect for like uh, that top down. They they know exactly how to make you look at what they want you to look at yeah. you know what i mean um and um and dark souls uh is pretty it's pretty obvious if you if you look at some of the stuff but um other games that like uh maybe are not so obvious is things like neverwinter nights um uh you know games uh, like deus ex uh games that have you uh really absorbing the world from um more of like a contextual than a, than a pure plot i mean neverwinter nights is also is kind of both but games like deus ex like um uh, like system shock uh, stuff like that is uh they they build their world through what you see not what you're doing necessarily um and i think that's perfect for foxhole given that it's a really team oriented it's a battlefield you're sort of fighting in a place that has a lot of history and that's something um that's something that i'm, I'm really inspired by as well as books <laughs> like oh, it's well. not a game but i'm really inspired by like old stephen king stuff like the stand and Things like that. So anyway, there is a game that uh, <laughs> that I played a lot when I was uh, uh, that uh, reminds me a lot of Foxhole, which which was a, a, a spreadsheet game that I played so much in my life, and that uh, one of the things that like makes me uh, think about what happens at Foxhole when you have all these wars. It was mm -hmm. like a galaxy conquering spreadsheet game yeah. that it, I played for like years after, like uh, months after months, and. 
people would attack you and then you lose everything and you're like wow you made like one wrong move yeah no there were no visuals there were no anything it was just literally right. numbers but you felt so that compelled. probably felt more real absolutely because i was like in this yeah group with my friends and each one of us was controlling a different planet and yeah. whatever so that made a big deal so that that's something that really stick to me that i tried to bring to foxhole as well um well someone said no rts inspiration and i actually want to say that like uh mark and i can both agree at the very least um and i, and I know other members of the team that command and conquer is like a massive inspiration well, the first command and conquer the, the very first one yeah. the very first command and conquer i blew my life savings at the time <laughs> to upgrade my pc from four megs of ram to eight and um so i can play the first command and conquer because i was so obsessed i was so obsessed about that game I, yeah yeah i find i find answering <laughs> probably questions, way too obsessed i find answering questions of these uh, sort kind of kind of uh higher because you there's obviously everything that we do is a sum of everything that you experienced before and if we try to say every single game every book every movie yeah, every yeah, game. Sure. Like, like, yeah i try I like trying to like a, we should have a separate stream just talking <laughs> about games, games that like, i can just keep talking about yeah. this Absolutely. Hour, right? so hard on that note uh thank you guys for hanging out uh for our you know close to one year anniversary and sorry for the sorry for the technical difficulties sorry for me rambling on for half an hour about why you should buy the game <laughs> but we are really excited about the launch of the game it is uh it is coming soon uh the date is the 27th, the 27th. Uh, and uh, it will be $19.99. We have a discount, discount at lunch. For $17.99. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. We'll see you in two weeks. If you have any questions, obviously, feel free to uh, talk to us. And don't Discord. forget, watch the community stream next week. You want to post Reveal. a link again? Because uh, I think that could be helpful. It's a great stream. I try to tune into it as much as I can. And um, I hope you guys do that as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. See you guys in a couple weeks. And...